Pre-press files, getting all that stuff correct is about giving the printer the best possible input materials from your side to work with, right? But there's another thing, which is the printer also has to get input from industry. They have to get paper, they have to get ink, right? And for the most part, in my experience so far, ink is not really something that you have to think about much. So from what I've seen, and again, you know, we are sort of new to this because, you know, this isn't our business. So this is what I learned going through this process once. Maybe there's more that you would learn if you did it all the time. But the one thing that never comes up in the pre-press process, as far as I've seen, is the printer asking you which inks you want them to use for, for CMY, for CMYK. So from what I can tell, you really don't have to make decisions about the inks. The inks kind of just are the inks. And unless I guess you want something special, it just doesn't seem to come up. What comes up is paper. So paper is more or less non-standard. It's not like you go to a printer and with like the inks, they just, these are the inks they use in this press and it's like off you go, right? And it was never asked, it was never discussed. It wasn't even really mentioned as an option or something you might even care about. But paper always is. And the reason for that is there's different um, parameters of paper that affect how the book, uh, like the interior of the book and the cover of the book look and you have to pick which ones you want. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go to our actual Kickstarter page. So if I go to our Kickstarter page right now, I actually posted an update when we made our stretch goal of Spot UV. I posted this image, uh, oh sorry, this uh, video. And this video is actually uh, the easiest way I can think of to show you what I mean by these different uh, aspects of the paper. So if you take a look at what's happening here, I'm holding up this uh, comic called Oink. This is a matte cover. So what does that mean? Well, when you get paper, effectively the way that it's made to a first approximation, or at least the way that we have to understand how it's made, there's probably a lot more intricacy to it if you're actually making paper. Paper stock, can be completely uncoated, which means it's literally just pulpy paper, like, you know, glue and wood or whatever. I mean, I don't know how they make paper now. It can literally just be like paper and that's it. Or it can be paper that's treated with a coating. And the coating is sort of like a reflective translucent material uh, like that gets sort of deposited onto it, almost like an ink, but it doesn't have a color. And you can do one pass of that, like, or I should say you can do like, you know, a certain percentage covering of that, or you can do like a double coating of it. And depending on which of those you pick, uncoated, a little bit of coating, or a lot of coating, that's how you get uncoated paper, matte paper, or glossy paper. So matte paper is not actually uncoated. It is coated, it's just not coated with as much. Glossy paper is coated with more. And when we say coated, we actually mean before the ink. So it's literally the paper stock. When they made the paper, they put down that glossy material, that uh, whatever you wanna call it, that substrate. They put it down before the ink ever got there. So this first reflectivity that you see as I'm sort of tilting this, uh, the cover of this comic, that's matte. And the way matte works is you can see the whole thing just kind of uniformly gets more bright as you tilt it. And then it sort of, uh, you can see it doing there. And it uniformly comes back to, uh, to not bright as you tilt it forward, right? And this corresponds, like in the game development world, to more of a diffuse surface, right? It sort of reflects light evenly from all directions to a certain extent. Not as much as uncoated paper would, but it's less specular, right? It's less like a mirror. Now, glossy, which is this right here, is more like a mirror. And what you can see is you can actually see the shape of the light in it. You see that? 
and it doesn't reflect as much light when it's just being starting to tilt, right? So until it actually reflects the whole light, it doesn't reflect much. And again, this is because that highly reflective coating, we've like doubled probably, I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, I'm not a paper manufacturer. We've doubled the amount of gloss that's in there, right? Now, these are not the best examples of this because uh, they're actually, this might actually be even more gloss than that. Uh, and I wanna talk about that right after this, but let me say a few more things about matte and gloss. But anyway, I just wanna use those to illustrate the difference between matte and gloss. The, this may actually be gloss plus, and we'll talk about what that is in a, in a second. So, when you're picking your paper, you have to decide which of, of those you want. And you're gonna pick probably different papers for the interior and exterior of your book anyway, and the reason for that is typically the cover is like thicker, right? It's a thicker piece of paper because it takes more wear and tear, right? Uh, and uh, so when you're picking, you're usually free, it, it's usually not gonna cost you any more to pick a different thing for your color as for the interior of the book because you probably had to do that already anyway. It is obviously probably a little cheaper if you can just print everything on the same paper stock because then you don't have to have a separate pass through the press. But that's even that's not necessarily true because it depends on how many you're printing. And so it, it, again, all of those things we're gonna get to in a, in a, in a after we, we finish talking about the actual selection process. When we talk about cost and shipping and stuff, we'll, you know, we'll get into that a little bit more. So what you need to decide is for the interior of the book, what are you gonna have? You're gonna have matte paper, you're gonna have glossy paper. And typically that's all people really use. I mean, you couldn't go more wild with it if you're making something special, but if we're talking about a graphic novel, that's usually what they are. Matte is probably the more common choice because although it's less vibrant, because again, it reflects a little more light more uniformly, which means that you get a little duller effect of the ink. What it does do is it cuts down on glare, right? So it's kind of like a matte screen. It's easier to use a matte screen, you know, in the sun because it's reflecting less glare at you, you know what I mean? If there's a bright light nearby. But on the other hand, a glossy cover, it allows the inks to control more of that reflection because you're not washing it out unless you're right in a reflection. That's great, except when you're actually trying to read, there usually is a light there, and now if it's this mirror, you're like accidentally getting these big bright blotches, right? So it can be actually worse for reading because it creates this more narrow mirror focus thing that can really disrupt it, just like a modern glossy screen on the laptop. Sometimes you're trying to use it and you're sitting somewhere and there's this light behind you and you can't see anything. There's a giant glare right there, you know, and you can't do anything about it without tilting the screen like all the way forward or something, right? So typically, you know, people maybe pick a matte finish on the interior, but really the main takeaway that I would give you for this process is look at samples. Whatever printer you pick, they should have a sample book or they should be able to send you samples themselves and that they've printed on their press with their stock that they are going to be using and you can feel it and see how it looks. That's what you wanna do. You wanna pick based on what you see and feel. Don't just take my word for it or guess or anything like that, right? So when you're actually working with a printer, that should be trivial. They should have samples and you're gonna want samples from them anyway, as we talk about in the next section, we're gonna talk about picking a printer. Okay, so if you look at this last example, this is an example of something else that can happen during the print process. Now, if you notice what happens here, when I tilt this ski journal, you can see that only part of the cover reflects, right? So this part is dull and this part is shiny. That's because in addition to coating the paper, you can also coat the result of the printing. So the printer gets the paper, it's already been coated with a certain amount of the glossy material, either a little bit in the case of matte or a lot in the case of glossy. But now, after you're done with the printing process, you can also choose to deposit another layer of gloss over the top. And when you do that, you can also choose where you want that gloss. So that's why when I was here, I was like, I don't really know, this may be double gloss, meaning it was glossy paper, or you know, it could even be matte paper, but then it was glossed on top of the ink 
I don't know because I don't really have a good enough eye yet for it. I bet a, a print pro, like someone who did a lot of printing, they would just know. They'd be like, oh yeah, that's gloss after, or no, that's gloss before, or that's glossy paper with gloss after, right? They'd probably know, right? So anyway, that is the paper picking process. And the part that I can't really communicate to you online is there's a second parameter in addition to matte or glossy for the interior of the book that you need to pick. And that's the weight of the paper. Now, 80 pound, I think, you know, is, is a pretty standard weight. They're measured in pounds. So 80 pound paper is a pretty standard weight for like a graphic novel, but it varies. So again, this is where you want to actually get samples from your printer and actually play with them, feel what it's like, see what it's like to turn a page. Is it too thick? Is it too thin? Is it too stiff to turn? Is it too floppy, right? And so the weight of the paper will affect all those things. It'll affect the feel of it. It will affect how hard it is to turn the page. It'll affect how thick the book is even, right? So you need to kind of get a handle on that as well. And that's mostly feel because like I said, you're probably not going to go super high on the pound, on the, on the paper pound uh, for the interior of the book anyway. But, you know, you've got some choices. So that's, again, something that you want to play around with.